I think there is just a tremendous amount of resentment and shame of non-Western peoples against Western peoples for Western peoples outsized achievements and contributions. I mean, it's really unbearable. I was actually, you know, leaving aside American blacks who I think do feel that resentment and, and shame and envy. I mean, it's this unholy brew of sentiments. It's an unholy brew of sentiments. You know, those black Americans, they're just unholy and they're shamed and horrible and inferior. Weird how this works. Uh, that uh, supreme racist, uh, her name is Amy Wax, and she's actually a professor at the uh, University of Pennsylvania Law. That's a great place for her to be uh, saying things like this. But she said a lot more because then she focused her attention on Indian immigrants and uh, talks about their country. Watch. Well, that is to me utterly bizarre and fascinating. And why does not, anybody put up with that? Right, I'm not saying all, no, all I've Indian immigrants are this I've way. I'm just it. saying you look at the roster of you know who's leading the programs, you know the endless number of programs where they talk about diversity and racism and all the racism that people have to encounter in medicine and how racist medicine is and all this, and you see these brown faces or you see these Asian faces and you think. I mean, literally, you think, so you're coming from your country, which you're implying you know, a is equal or system. better than our country. <laughs> literally. And you're telling us how awful we are. Well, what's the explanation for that? They're taught that they are better than everybody else because they are Brahmin elites. And yet, on some level, their country is a shithole. Excuse my language. No, yeah. Okay. No, no, we are not excuse that at all. Just use that same Donald Trump language that apparently they said they don't use. Uh, why were you ashamed of Donald Trump saying that if then uh, you say it and go, oh, that's great, it's fine. So, okay, that's a side point. Uh, that woman, uh, as was pointed out, the University of Penn probably has to do something as far as at least addressing why they still have her around. Let's look at what they're talking about. Uh, again, this is uh, Professor Wax is her name. Wax's comments came as Penn is amid a faculty Senate review process that could lead to sanctions. Against a 69 year old tenure professor who has worked at Penn for two decades. Penn declined to comment on her latest remarks, and the school reiterated that her views do not reflect our values or practices. So I'm curious what they're going to do about it. And suddenly, Professor Wax doesn't want to have anything to say about her thoughts about those brown faces and those Asian faces that come from those horrible nations. Um, then now they're here and putting their faces in my white face. How dare they? They might actually get some of their disease on me. This is how blatant and disgusting this is. But it's not her first dip into this racism pool. Is what she said in January about Asian people. You know, she spreads it all around. If you go into middle school schools, you'll see that Indians, South Asians, are now rising stars. In medicine, they're sort of the new Jews, I guess. But these diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives are poisoning the scientific establishment and the medical establishment right now, is what she said. And also, she's Jewish. Uh, maybe it's just that Democrats love open borders and Asians want more Asians here. Perhaps they are just mesmerized by the uh, feel good cult of diversity. I don't know the answer, of course you don't. But as long as uh, most Asians support Democrats and help to advance their positions, I think the United States is better off with fewer Asians and less Asian immigration. So David, we've got uh, those dirty brown people that are coming from India, I can't believe that they're actually doing well. We've got those under uh, achieving black folks that never do anything right, so why are they here? And then we've got uh, Asians who are now being brought in by other Asians that are already here to make sure they take over our country because they're just too smart. If you're too smart or if you're too dumb in this woman's book, you're dispensable to her. I wonder which type of person she likes. These are the people that complain endlessly about identity politics, yet here they are. Focusing completely on identity, this is white identity politics. These people feel so aggrieved because of the just existence of other people that don't look like them. I mean, the fact that this is this is a discussion that has been normalized now. It's on television and mainstream press. I mean, even five years ago, I don't think you would see something this extreme. But now this is just normal to hear conversations like this. These just openly racist people with incredibly powerful positions. As a professor, like, are you kidding me? Like it's one thing if this is some random person off the street. This is somebody who's brought in, who speaks on these issues as an authoritative figure, and she's taken seriously by you know at least 
uh, one side of, of the, uh, the spectrum here. It is uh, completely nuts. So I wonder if um, I'm waiting for conservatives to start swarming the campus and talk about how these professors are poisoning your child's mind with racist beliefs. Because either they think this is racist or they think this is on the up and up. I'm not sure which one they're gonna choose or they're just gonna be quiet because they're good with this anyway. So we'll talk about it instead.